Hi guys, it's Max here. I just came back from Bristol where I met Luke Dormel and he is the author of this book called The Formula and the author of one of my favorites, Thinking Machines. Now Luke is super accomplished in the field of artificial intelligence and uh, this book actually, Thinking Machines, was reviewed by Ray Kurzweil uh, in the New York, I think it was the blog and he got referenced in the new book, well, relatively new book called Homo Jewess. Top five big ideas from the book, um, Thinking Machines. On page 27, uh, actually, I really like this quote, and there Luke Dormel cites uh, Steven Pinker. Hard problems are easy, while easy problems are hard for the machine. So what that basically means is that some jobs that are very difficult for humans to do, for example, uh, complex data processing are extremely easy for a machine because of the way it's built and the way the algorithms work. And then some jobs that are relatively easy for a human, um, let's say, you know, cleaning the toilet or something like that. Definitely not a fun task, uh, but quite an easy one requiring quite a low, you know, skill set, objectively speaking. That can be quite difficult, for example, for a robot to do, and that requires disproportionate investment. Uh, into you know the research and development of that robot also another point on this if you weigh up the wage that you pay for a human to do say the cleaning and then the wage that you pay to a machine or as in the wage that you put in into research and development of a machine uh, then you know those jobs unfortunately even though you know they're quite dull and quite dirty as peter Novak says um, they are still done by humans now the second big idea from the book um, is connected to neural networks and you really need to read um, the chapter on this but Luke goes into incredible depth to talk about the origin of neural networks and to discuss how you know for example the research into neural networks almost got uh, dried out and then it was revived but by you know a bunch of companies and a bunch of circumstances so that he makes a point that what we have in terms of neural nets, you know, that basically form the basis of a lot of AI algorithms uh, might not have happened and were considered to be, you know, this field that no one was quite sure about. And obviously there was more research put, put into it and it caused disproportionate dividends in terms of the development of artificial intelligence. The third big idea that Luke is talking about in uh, Thinking Machines is uh, AI put in our jobs in jeopardy. And it's not my pun, all attribution goes to Luke Dormel, but I thought it was really funny. You know, obviously Jeopardy being a game at which IBM Watson recently defeated the human challenge. So after a discussion uh, with Luke Dormel, I, I, I understand what he means by, you know, there is all this talk about singularity and there is this talk about machines eventually killing us potentially, but he's not, he wants to raise more awareness about an issue of AI displacing a lot of jobs that are essential for certain groups of people right now. So he does talk about self-driving cars um, and then he does talk about law quite a bit. I think he, well, from the from our conversation today, I really understood that he likes the intersection of artificial intelligence and law. And indeed, me coming from legal background, it's one of the most fascinating intersections of AI with sort of, you know, jurisprudence has been around for centuries you know, since developed in, you know, arguably Roman Empire, this is the archaic concept, whereas AI as a concept is about, what, like, a bit more than 60 years old. So then talking about AI potentially displacing jobs, uh, what Luke Demel notes is that, yes, there is going to be quite a loss of uh, jobs in the short term that might cause unemployment. However, in the long term, there is going to be a rise of... Um, artificial artificial intelligence so that he calls you know the humans and their skills the humans and their skills are being augmented by artificial intelligence and then he calls those humans mechanical turks referencing a, a very old invention that was kind of marketed as this robot playing chess but in reality and called Mechanical Turk, but in reality was actually a human controlling the robot. I really like this idea of, you know, there is an AI process, however, at the end of it, there is a human. So that, let's say that 
uh, there is a task, right? The task involves five steps. Right now, one step is done by a computer, four steps is done by a human being. What Luke Jamal says is that maybe there's gonna be four steps done by a computer, but the one last one is gonna be done by a human being. And that's what he calls AAI, um, artificial, artificial intelligence, right? So he's saying that quite a few jobs are gonna be in that sector. The fourth big idea that Luke Dermel introduces is that artificial intelligence, in order to be really practically useful and to fulfill its potential placed in it by the programmer, it has to be connected to a data set, which is usually internet. So that what he's saying is that artificial intelligence needs some infrastructure and it needs to be plugged into something in order to reap full benefits from the technology. You know, so he's talking about Internet of Things and he's talking about uh, data sets from Internet being, you know, integral to the way artificial intelligence device or machine uh, performs its tasks. Now then he goes on to talk about smart devices and uh, very quickly raises some dangers connected to those smart devices. Uh, give an example of, you know, big corporates tracking the performance of their employees uh, using performance sensors. And uh, the story that comes to mind is the one with Amazon, you know, that it's been in the news quite a bit. Amazon lately has been getting some negative PR for the right reasons because the conditions of uh, working at Amazon, and um, I know some people who are actually working at Amazon, but at quite, uh, you know, managerial roles. So not in the fulfillment centers, but in the business you know, side of Amazon. And uh, the ecosystem is pretty much the same across the board. Like it's, you know, drive for peak performance. And uh, the fact that Amazon introduced those, um, potentially is introducing those bracelets that are tracking the, you know, the movement of workers so that the workers don't even have the time to pee. So they have to pee in a plastic bottle. Uh, I mean, that's, I think that's crossing the line. Although I think it's inevitable, you know, now um, I don't know what kind of, Oops, excuse me. Sorry. Now, I don't know what kind of jobs you're involved into, but um, there is a bunch of software that uh, requires you to log your hours in. So for example, law firms would use software that where you log the number of hours you worked in a certain case. The tracking software already exists, but something that involves you know your location or your biological senses I think that might be crossing the line and I think a lot of people are going to be uncomfortable with it. And this is sort of what uh, Luke Dommel is getting it, is getting into uh, when he's talking about the problems arising with smart devices. The fifth big idea that is being discussed in the book is the potential of artificial intelligence to be creative. Now, and then Luke gives an introduction of, you know, we don't really, when we think about machines and what machines do and the way they work, we do not really think of them as um, entities capable of being creative, right? However, talking about writing, talking about uh, composing, you know, music, talking about directing films, artificial intelligence devices are already doing many of those things. There are novels written by AI, there is music written by AI. AI suggests which films you would probably want to watch although I, I get it's, it's it's a different thing so what i'm what i'm what i'm getting at here is that creativity is considered as this human only notion so that the fact that machine uses a data set to for example to come up with a novel so let's say it analyzes every text that has ever been written and then puts the sentences together contextualizes them itself and then produces a novel humans quite easily default into saying that those are not really creations, as in they didn't involve any actual creativity on side of the machine because what it used to, you know, create that novel or that piece of music uh, is just a sort of raw data set that it has broken. So it's very mathematical, it's very structured. And a similar thing is happening to the term thinking. You know, when we, the book is called Thinking Machines, right? Thinking Machines. So thank you very much for listening. Um, this was my review, very, very brief, five ideas. Again, I just got back from Bristol. I just met with Luke, so I'm like super duper excited. So I was like, I'm gonna bang out this video about thinking machines, uh, just talk about five ideas that Luke raised. 
I know I went a bit off script with the book, so Luke, please forgive me, but do definitely uh, get this book. Um, it's on Amazon, it's, it's, on, it's on everywhere. The publisher is WH Allen. Thank you very much for listening and see you later.